Hey everybody, welcome aboard. This is Shruti. Here I am again with an interesting case law, which is State of Orissa versus Ram Bahad, which is in writ petition dated 9th November 1959. Without any further delay, let's start with this interesting case. In the village of Rasgobindpur, there was an abandoned air dome, in which there was large quantity of valuable air aeroscape. The garrison engineer of defense department kept the aeroscape in in charge of two people. They were named Debakar and Gobind. This was in view to prevent pilferage by any unauthorized person in that area. Once Jagat Bandhu Chatterjee, the CEO of Chatterjee Brother Calcutta, came to Rasgobindpur. He was accompanied by his Nepali servant. The servant was named Ram Bahadur Thapa. They came for the purpose of purchasing the said aeroscrap. He and his Nepali servant stayed in the house of Krishna Chandra Pattu, who had a tea stall in the village of Rasgobindpur. All around the air dome, there were Adivasi villages inhabited mostly by Santals and Majis. These persons have strong beliefs in ghosts and black magic. They were. There, an abandoned air dome earned a notoriety in that area as being infested by a ghost. There are several footpaths cutting across the air dome, leading to one or the other village. Once at night, Chandra Maji, who is a resident of the village, took the shelter under the tea stall of him. They thought that it was the ghost, and they were anxious on seeing him. All of them ran towards the city and. Nepali servant was first one to reach there. With his khurki, he started attacking the ghost. Krishna Chandra Pato went there after a long time, but the respondent did not notice him. As he was attacking the people, he did not know whom he was attacking, and later he got to know that the person whom he has attacked were few Maji women, who came there for mahua trees and mahua flowers. When we talk about the point of view of both the parties, it was the duty of Mohua women to follow their cultures, whereas it was, it also showed Thapa's mental condition about ghosts and black magic. Provisions for such type of cases are given under Indian Penal Code. On the aforesaid facts, the respondent was charged under Section 302 Indian Penal Code for the murder of Delhi Majiani. Under Section 326 Indian Penal Code for having caused grievous hurt, also the judge told that this was not a prosecution case; that the respondent had either necessarily criminal intention or knowledge, but it was fairly conceded by Learning Sun and Counsel that when the respondent attacked his victims, he was in good faith and he believed them to be ghosts and not human beings. But they believed that the respondent did not act with. care and attention and consequently he should have been declared guilty under section 304a indian penal code and section 336 indian penal code for causing hurt also when we talk about the sections we should first know about section 79 of indian penal code and its applicability to the facts it is necessary it is necessary to come to the clear finding fact The circumstances under which respondent Nepali attacked the aforesaid were victimized by Krishna Chandra Patro and Jagat Bandhu Chatterjee. Krishna Chandra Patro's evidence were not given importance as as he was materially contradicted his own previous statement made under 164 Indian Penal Code. Thus in his earlier statement under that section he admitted that Bengali Babu forced him to go out of the house. but in court of session he failed to prove the same also talking about the evidences from evidence and the portion of evidence which are not contradicted by his previous statement the following facts clearly emerge the respondent and his master were complete stranger to the locality as they came my 6 months before the air dome was reputed to be infested with ghosts and it was generally believed on tuesdays and saturdays and at particular time of 9 o'clock the whole party was therefore obsessed with the idea that ghosts resided there at night they saw some figures dancing there section 79 is available to a person who by mistake have done something or have acted in good faith 
to conclude the judges told that the standard of care and coercion must be judged according to the capacity and intelligence of the person whose contract and conduct is being questioned here the judges here were r narsimhan and s barman also the judges told that the law does not expect the standards law does not expect the same standard of care and attention from all but from the position they hold in the society this was indeed an eye opening case for everyone